If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. To begin solving this problem, we can go ahead and draw a picture of the two skaters. And to keep things simple, we can actually represent each skater as just a particle, one whose mass is 40 kilograms, the other whose mass is 65 kilograms, and they're initially separated by a distance of 10 meters. Now, the two skaters are going to pull themselves along this pole, and as they do so, they're going to move towards each other and eventually meet at some point between them. And our job is to find that point, essentially. And to do so, we're going to take advantage of the following fact. And that is the following. As the skaters move towards each other, the center of mass does not move. So that might seem somewhat contradictory, but even though these two particles are moving towards each other, the overall center of mass of the system of particles isn't moving. So as long as we can locate that center of mass, then we'll be able to figure out how far the 40 kilogram skater has moved. And to help us locate the center of mass, we can mark a point along the pole right here. We're gonna put that point a little closer to the 65 kilogram mass because the center of mass would be located closer to the larger mass. And what we'll do is we'll superimpose a y and x axis on top of this hypothetical center of mass point here. And then once we do that, we can use the following equation to help us solve for this unknown distance. Remember that we're looking for the distance from the center of mass to the 40 kilogram skater because that is how far that skater will travel. So we can mark that distance x and then the distance from the center of mass to the 65 kilogram skater would be 10 minus x since the entire length between them is 10 meters. Now if we look at the equation on the left hand side we have the x coordinate of the center of mass and the way that we've situated the axes we can see that the x coordinate of the center of mass would be 0 since it's located at the origin. We then have 1 over the total mass, which is capital M. We can add 40 kilograms to 65 kilograms to get the total mass, which gives us 105. And then we're going to multiply by the sum of each mass times its respective distance. So for example, the distance from the 65 kilogram object to the origin would be the 10 minus x. So we'll take the 65 and multiply it by that distance. Notice that that distance would be considered positive because it's located to the right of the origin. And then for the other mass, we would take its value of 40 kilograms and multiply by the distance from the origin to that mass. Now that distance would actually be negative x since it's measured to the left of the origin. So we just have to make sure to put a negative x in there. We could multiply both sides of the equation by 105 in order to cancel out this 1 over 105. We could then add the 40x over to the left hand side. And I suppose we could also distribute the 65. We'll then add 65x over to the left. And then when we divide by 105, we get roughly 6.2 meters as the correct answer for x. So that represents the distance, again, from the center of mass to that 40 kilogram skater. And as the skaters pull themselves towards each other, they will meet at the point of center of mass. So the correct answer will be that x value of 6.2 meters. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for other videos. Remember that you can send your own question into this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.